With home invasions on the rise, how safe are you? We ask the expert. We've seen as a business in the Johannesburg sector is that the crime patterns have really changed. You have individuals coming out at night, early hours of the morning, wanting to penetrate your property because there's hunger. Even your old guarding shoes would go missing. These guys are brazen. They don't know if anybody's at home at the time or not at home at the time. However, they will deal with the circumstance as it, as it predicts itself. So we've seen this year and in the last couple of months where, where a front door is knocked down and if people are inside, we're going to start attacking you. Nine times out of ten, these guys are armed with a back of pick handles, rifles, handguns, whatever it may be. This is pure desperation. This is home invasions like we've never seen in the past. And it's time for us to be more aware of this. And I ref what I'm re really referring to now is, have you briefed your family about these home invasions? Have you briefed the staff that work for you? Are your children going to know what to do sitting in the back of your car when pulling into the driveway because you've just fetched them from somewhere? Or are you dropping off children outside where you're standing outside speaking to the other parent? These are all top of mind things that I cannot emphasize enough. It's all good and well to have good sophisticated security installed at your home. That's not what we need right now. What you need right now is to take the time, sit down and make sure that you all have a level of security consciousness in your minds and in your family and you live it every day and talk about it every day. Now, what do you need to look out for in such cases where you're in the neighborhood or you're out and about in the streets, you know, minding your own business? What you really need to look out for is you need to be totally aware of your surroundings. Make sure that you are concentrate, that you concentrate and that you're focused and that you're not playing on our cell phones like we normally do. It's a normal thing to do. Make sure of your surroundings and practice small little tips pulling into your driveway. I've, for the last year, been conducting a very interesting chat that I host most Thursday evenings and I cannot emphasize enough how individuals should not be pulling into their driveway with a car that's either behind you or ahead of you or you judging the car that because it's a fancy vehicle behind you you feel it's okay to pull into your driveway. Trust me these hardened criminals are using very very fancy vehicles more fancier than you and I can afford today and before you rub your eyes out they are behind you and they are into your property. And again, be that electric fence, be that camera system that you're invested in. It's not going to help you if you are negligent when it comes to open your gate. And we've seen a lot of these follow homes get into the driveway, run up to the car door and all hell breaks loose. And that's when the home invasion kind of takes place. There's lots of other advice I can give to those. But again, going back to your question, going back to the street, full observations of what you are doing how you acting and how you behaving. Is it a good idea to confront criminals? In my honest opinion, I would never do that myself. And the reason why I say this is these criminals are armed. They're not trained to use these respective firearms that have either been stolen or acquired elsewhere. And again, any valuable in your home today is fully replaceable. So you are going to get the question, where is the safe? Where is the jewellery? Where is the firearms? As much as you don't want those items to disappear from your possessions, trust me, the quicker you play along and surrender and make no eye contact and show your hands at all time and guide the process through, the quicker it's going to be over. My best advice in this time is to play along because you want this traumatic experience to end. And uh, yes, it's all good and well saying that we can be the Rambos and we can manage to get this guy around. One wrong move and your life is lost. How's Beagle Watch using this information to improve uh, its service offering? We operate a very, very informative newsletter that goes out on a weekly basis to our respective suburbs. Uh, we break it down even further that, that we talk to the actual suburb because I think if you're a resident of Ferndale, you don't want to necessarily hear what's happening in Melville. So we make it very, very area specific and I cannot emphasize enough, I know we all got busy life, life, life uh, days, busy days during our, our uh, activities, but take the time to look at these hints because you've asked me the question, how do we portray this information? We put it in the newsletter. I host live Zooms. We go out and do talks with respective businesses. We would go and train staff in the restaurants on how to, how to deal with something going wrong in the restaurant. So again, 
I urge the public to keep an eye out for our newsletter. Be it a customer, be it watch or not, you're welcome to get your hands on the information. For me, it's not so much about marketing the business, but it's marketing the security aspect of society today and how you can deal with it and become just that slightly more educated and hopefully reduce the, the chance of becoming a victim. I'm Mpo Palazzi, your executive mayor for the city of Johannesburg. I'm a medical doctor by profession and the first black woman to wear the mayoral chain in the city of gold. After the first few months in office, it's a tradition to report back to your residents on progress made. It's part of the delays in formulating our multi-party government coalition, which is without doubt the largest this country has seen to date. I sit here today to report back to you on our performance during the first few months of our administration, the Golden Start. In our Golden Start, we addressed key areas that are broken and need fixing, and also aimed to achieve specific goals in order to get the basics right. The multi-party government approved a 77 billion rand budget. We've taken a tough stance against households, businesses and government departments who default on paying their municipal accounts. The city has approved the building of 10 new clinics to care for our residents. 1,800 new JMPD officers have been trained. And 1,100 new social housing units are being built. I also must acknowledge the brave men and women from our health services who led the fight against COVID-19. Without each and every one of you, we would have been unable to change the mask mandate and begin to return to life as normal. Our community clinics were an essential part of the fight against COVID. These clinics form an essential part of our healthcare arsenal and are often the closest to where people live and work. A full Golden Report can be accessed on the city's website, which is www.joburg.org.za. Well, as the new Joburg multi-party government, we laid out seven mayoral priorities in line with what our residents asked us to do for them in this five-year term. Our seven priorities start with getting the basics right, getting the city functioning again that talks to the supply of energy, of electricity, water. Clean streets, roads that are tarred, and, and so on. So all the basics that will make it livable and a place to work and do business, but also a good place to visit for our tourists. Our second priority focuses on safety and security. And for this, what we promised our residents to do is to increase our boots on the ground in terms of the police force. But also to work in a more integrated fashion with other tiers of government and other law enforcement agencies. The third thing we promised our residents was to give them a caring city. That's a city that recognises that not everybody in the city is the same. Some people who require a little bit of help, some people are vulnerable and marginalised, and some people can't afford to live in Johannesburg. And, and so we've identified those vulnerable groups and we're assisting them through various modalities. The fourth thing we promised our residents is to be a business-friendly city. A city that's open to do business, that cuts the red tape and makes it easy for the business sector to interface with government. Then we promised them an inclusive city. And this is through the provision of different housing modalities, but also inclusive settlements that also have social and community development amenities. Our priority number six is for a well-run city. focuses on financial sustainability, focuses on the city being corruption free, and it focuses on us having the right relationships with the regulators such as the National Treasury as well as the Auditor General. And our last priority is to give our residents a smart city, making sure that Johannesburg is smart from the institution itself, that we're doing everything in as smart a manner as possible, and that we incentivize smart solutions from all our departments and entities, but also that everything that we roll out on the ground is smart.